right, that's... Welcome race fans to the Dirt Racing Challenge Series and tonight, February 2nd, 2018, we've got on hand for you the penultimate race of the first season of the Dirt Racing Challenge Series and tonight we are at Lanier National Speedway in Brazelton, Georgia and uh, Brendan, nice to have you up here in the booth with me again. Uh, last week we saw Kerstetter win at USA International, do you think he can repeat? Um, I'd like to say he probably could. He's pretty good with these cars, as we've seen his uh, outstanding performance, as he said recently. Um, so far, he was quickest in practice, and I think he's quite put down a qualifying time yet, but I definitely think we expect to see him up front again. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain number of guys that you expect to be in the front week in, week out here. And uh, we'll bring up just the quick qualifying results as these guys are currently qualifying. Obviously, Kerstetter, uh looks like has already put down a lap and already on pole. Uh, Derek Fisher uh, currently in second, Nick Gray in third. And uh, one thing you'll notice as we go through some of the results here once they actually come in, you see Nelson Webster in third. He's a guy to watch tonight. He's... Been kind of a sleeper pick throughout the uh, the first season here so far. Ted Liette just fired off into the 10th position. He's a guy to watch. He won at Williams Grove. Uh, so already you're seeing there's there's those select few guys that you watch for week in, week out here. And uh, obviously those are the ones uh, to pick for a win. Robert Kerstetter first. Ted Liette so far now in the 6th. Nelson Webster kind of a sleeper pick so far in 3rd tonight. We'll move on through the results. We've also got uh, Chris Horn. I know he's been here a couple times before, and he's currently in the 20th spot. He's actually not qualified too well so far tonight, but he's still got time. Uh, let's see, as we look through the rest of the field, uh, Glenn Richards is a, a name that pokes out to me as one of the uh, the usuals here uh, at the DRCS. And we've also got uh, Eddie Ryan, it looks like, possibly hopping into the session here tonight. Uh, that's about it, actually. Kind of a an interesting field as far as you know usuals here, Brennan. There aren't too many. Yeah, um, I think Brody, the uh, guy who actually operates the league here, mentioned there's some other race going on that I think is, uh, took a couple of the regulars away from him tonight, but we'll see if uh, maybe some other guys have a chance at getting away with the win tonight. Yeah, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of names that we see week in, week out here. Obviously, Eddie Ryan now just picks up into the top five position right there. Uh, Derek Fisher, we've seen a couple times out here. Nelson Webster, obviously, as well. Jarrett Liebert, uh, one of the newer names in the DRCS. Eddie Ryan, uh, a fast guy, but still a newer name to this league. Nick Gray has been here for a while. Ted Liette, obviously, has been here since the start. Uh, Landon Austin, DJ Kilinowski, those guys are new names to me. Del Glessner has been here before. Uh, so even just in the top 10, we're seeing a couple of new names. Yeah, interesting to see how they race around everybody and how quick they can get, you, you know, some people can put down a quick qualifying time, but your race pace is what really matters coming coming through the race. So let's see who's fast and who's not. And uh, Brendan, I believe, I believe you're the only one that can really check on how much time is left. I can't pull it up just because of limitations with using the... Uh, the overlay system, but uh, can you tell us exactly how much time these guys have left? Yeah, we have just, just under a minute now, we have about 45 seconds. So. so I'd imagine most of these guys probably have their fast time down. Obviously, uh, uh, these guys, I believe, have about four laps to qualify. You see five laps to go up in the top left. Uh, that's a bit inaccurate considering they add a lap for your outlap. I believe in IRTVO, so they've actually got four mm -hmm. uh, qualifying laps. That's as many as you can add, I believe, through your iRacing. I could be wrong. You might be able to go up to five, but I think I think four is the max. So uh, four good chances to go out there and get a qualifying lap. So a couple of these guys could still have a lap in the bank, but time is winding down. Yeah, and then we just broke the point. There's only about 15 seconds left where you won't really have time left now. So. This will pretty much lock in the field unless somebody's already on a flying lap, but I think everybody hit their times in already. 
Well, real quick, we'll check out some uh, some details about tonight's race. We are at uh, the Lanier National Speedway in Brazelton, Georgia, USA. Don't mind uh, the Quaker State 400 part. We're still working on that. Uh, if we move along here, it is in Brazelton, like I mentioned. Uh, just about a third of a mile. That's as long as this place is. It's .329 miles. A very, very small track and uh, rather high banked when it comes to dirt tracks as well. There's uh, 79 degrees track temp out. I'm not sure about the actual ambient temperature, but I think I can check on that right here. Uh, air temp, 79 degrees. Track temp, 79 degrees. Humidity, 60% uh, in the forecast. Not that it really matters at night with the lights on. It is partly cloudy. And uh, Brendan, let's uh, let's have you lead us down the grid. Alrighty, so coming away at the pole tonight is going to be Robert Kerstetter. Uh, followed by Derek Fisher, Nelson Webster in third, fourth going to Jarrett Liebert, fifth to Eddie Ryan, sixth going to Nick Gray, seventh to Ted Liette, eighth to Landon Austin, ninth to DJ Kilinowski, excuse me, and tenth going to Dale Glessner. In the 11th position, we've got Brad Spidel out of Pennsylvania. In 12th, we've got Brandon Steele out of the West. In 13th, in the number 22 car tonight is going to be Brock Garris, Jed Barton in 14th out of Indiana. In 15th, we've got Aaron Hamill in the number 37 car, Braden Jones to his outside in the 99 out of Indiana. Tony Souza gritting off tonight in the 17th position in the number 01 with Craig Levon in the 18th position. And in row number 10, we've got Brandon Franks and Jason Setzer. Alrighty, picking up at 21st is going to be Chris Horn, followed by Cole Huggins in 22nd. 23rd going to Austin Knee. 24th going to Peter Cobberly. Uh, 25th goes to Lachlan Robertson. And rounding out the field tonight in 26th is Logan Rumsey. So everybody else from here on out did not make the show, unfortunately. Um, and those drivers are going to be Chase Howard, Michael Shell, Glenn Richards, Cameron Jones, Jerry Glenn, Jarrett Reichard, uh, Blaze Baker, Steve Hahn, uh, Zach Evanson, and I think that's actually about it through the rest of the field. Looks like William Tehran actually as well. And uh, that's your starting grid tonight here from the Lanier National Speedway. We'll see if we can actually get to pole sitter Robert Kerstetter. These guys will have two laps uh, of pacing since this track is well under a mile. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see if I can track down the 27. I actually can't find him in my list. There's so many cars that come in. There we go. So many cars that come in, it's kind of hard to find these guys. But, Brendan, uh, I'll let you lead us in the green flag here tonight. Alrighty, so we do have the pace truck lights out. So we go down the back stretch here. Uh, Grinding through turn three. Chris Stetter looking. Pace car pulls in right away. He goes green, off. Green, green. Good jump for him so far. Uh, second place, Derek Fisher. Able to catch up to him a little bit through there. Pushing through the slick. Um, it's, looks like that's his preferred line at the moment. Chris Stetter keeping it way down low. He's uh, He's been known to do that, especially at the other tracks we've been to. He, keep, he usually likes to keep it down low until there's nothing left there. Uh, Fisher electing to slide through the middle, though, which is kind of interesting. You wouldn't think he'd get very much traction there. I don't know if maybe he's got the car set up in a, a slower gear or something like that. That's where he can hook up still or what. But, uh, he's able to keep with him so far. The best we've seen, I think, out of the races with Kerstetter. He's right there with him for the most part. Yeah, so far, Derek Fisher actually keeping on Kerstetter, making sure he has to race for this first place. Uh, these guys have 60 laps to try and navigate around this third mile speedway. And uh, you can see already, I think the third line for most of the night, as long as they can handle it down there in the slick, is going to be the bottom. Uh, obviously, that's the fastest way around the racetrack. And uh, contrary to popular belief coming into dirt racing, if you're one of the uh, the newer fans to dirt racing, these guys are not just wide open. They uh, definitely have to use throttle control, especially in the slick here on these dirt tracks. And actually, Derek Fisher starting to fish that top side. Yep, and we do have a yellow here. It's like a car spun around in turn one and two. As the leaders come through, he's gonna get it back around. That, that is to the, be the 99. 99. Yeah, 99. Braden Jones Braden out of Jones. Indiana already spun around in the Vans Rockstar machine. We'll take a look back at what happens to him. Uh, but already, you can see the troubles that this track leads to. It's just real hard to navigate. There's 20 or 25 rather other cars around this speedway, and it just gets really tight really fast. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I think an issue with Seal Knight is just how tight and small the track is compared to the, to the places that I think most lap traffic will definitely play a larger role than has. As long as they can keep the green flag, uh, Brody, you know, has been working on that, being able to get more green flag racing here. That way they can put on a better show for us. Yeah, and actually, uh, let's see if I can bring this up. That was not Braden Jones's fault. That was someone else who caught the wall out of turn four. And I'm not sure who it was. It looks like it's the 115. Sorry, I had to pause it just so I could see the number. That's the 115. Uh, that's Jed Barton who pretty much just caught the wall out of four. And that's the reason that uh, Braden Jones ended up going for a steal in turn, turn one and two. But Pace as these car guys, in. Yeah, I was just going to say, these guys get ready to go, I have to get back up real quick. Robert Kerstetter already off and away. Derek Fisher right on his, uh, I guess, tank, actually. Yeah, he's on the street cars. i got to think here for yeah. a second. Uh, it's been a long week, but, yeah, Derek Fisher's still on Kerstetter's tank, and he's not going away. A little bobble there out of turn four, but he is staying on him. 50 laps to go, 10 in the books. Yeah, as we... Uh they start to race it there's Fisher a little more of a bobble actually another yellow out I was getting ready to mention that Webster was catching right up on Webster all right Fisher excuse me and uh as you mentioned he may be one to look for as we have the 12 and uh turn two I believe there yeah and I think that's going to start out with Jason Setzer in the 20 car we'll go back and see exactly what happens but he was uh just on the back end of the 22 car not sure on the name there and actually it was someone else ahead you're right it was the 12 car that started that out uh, you see just the ride that the 20 goes for after the fi uh, field piles in. There's nowhere to go. And so uh, we'll see if we can actually get an on board of that because I think that'll be one of the best rides of the night. Landon Austin in the 12. And you saw him trying to get backfired there. Uh, just spinning the tires because the whole rear axle is knocked out. But yeah. we'll see if we can get a, a decent replay of this. Uh, actually, he got nailed from behind. So that might actually be a better show in a second. You see him go flipping over the wall and that's Never how you want to get your race going here at Lanier, or any race, really. I don't think you ever want to be on a fence. But yeah, the 37 ends up nailing him in turn one. The 37, that's going to be Aaron Hamill, who's currently in the 13th spot. Catch you back up here as we have the lights out on the pace truck going into three here. Yeah, this time I'm actually somewhat with it. <laughs> because we are back on Kerstetter and getting ready for the restart. They're off and away to 38. Derek Fisher trying to fish that bottom side, see if he can find something for Kerstetter here. That was a really good start for him. He was right there with them, and he's still right there with them, almost on the tank again. Uh, Webster going to play it, and we have another yellow car in turn one and two right in the middle. Craig like the, the, the 610, he's going to pull up in front of the leaders. Now that's Craig Levon in the 610 car uh, who went for a bit of a spin. We'll see what happens oh. to him. Oh, neck code, I think. Just kind of flipped out of nowhere. That's not what's going on. Let's see what goes with the on here. Yeah, definitely net code with the 115. He ends up getting collected by the 191, or collects the 191, 191 rather. And uh, that's, yeah, that's what goes on for LeVon there. So we'll pick back up with Kerstetter in the front. And I believe these guys actually have more than about five feet to the, the restart of this race. Actually, our pace, no, pace car lights are still on, thankfully. Oh, I thought I was going to have to struggle. <laughs> that, that really sucks to see for him there. He was, he was nowhere near that wall, and he unfortunately irising uh, detected that he clipped it there and sent him up to the high side of the track there. Well, as I share the stream around a little bit, I think these guys are uh, about to come to the one to go signal. Well, they already have. This is actually going to be the restart yeah. right here. Robert Kerstetter back in control of the restart. You see he's already off and away to 27, still out in front after about 18 laps now. Uh, Kerstetter, yeah, just in a really good spot. I think these guys might now start moving up to the top side. You saw Kerstetter roll one and two. Uh, on the top side, so Derek Fisher following him back down to the bottom. We'll see what these guys do. The line is going to change. That's the nature of dirt track racing. But the question is how much it will change and how they adapt to it. Caution out in the back. Didn't catch the cars on the back stretch there. He uh, exited before I could catch his number there. That's going to be Chris Horn, the 58 race agent sprint car. And I think this is going to be mostly a single car incident. He ends up just getting all out of shape. 
flipping, and uh, you can see the reason this car is shifting around like that, the whole rear axle is knocked out. He escapes quickly, gets back to the pits. Uh, cool job by him. Unfortunately, it didn't, he did not uh, make it there before the caution came out, so we will have a stoppage on the racetrack one more time tonight. Hopefully, though, for the last time, because I'd like to see these guys get going. Yeah, it would be, be pretty cool to see some good green flag racing. I think we really have some competition, at least through the top three. So it would be fun to see them actually get to battle it out here. Yeah, and we got to keep in mind with these guys up in the front, Nelson Webster and uh, Kerstetter and Derek Fisher, they're going to start getting desperate. Obviously, Kerstetter's in a real good spot. We're going to come to the restart in just a moment. Uh, but as far as Fisher... Uh, Webster and further back, you got Eddie Ryan up to fourth, uh, Ted Liette in fifth, Jarrett Liebert, Dale Glessner. Those guys are going to start getting desperate. They're going to start making desperate moves, uh, considering you may only have these restarts to try and get positions. So you got to get on it, Kerstetter. To that note, on the gas already, he's going to roll off the way in the Rush Truck Center sprint car. That's his best restart so far tonight. I think Fisher is a little bit slacking there. Uh, Webster going to be right on Fisher's tail here, though. Uh, tell you what, Fisher's making it work through the middle there. He is catching up to Kerstetter. I don't know how he does that there. That's a really hard line to run normally if you have a car set up for not being in the slick. So he's doing a really good job so far. Well, I don't want to jinx this, but they are getting a bit of a run in here. Derek Fisher trying to fish a hand. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I definitely jinxed that one. I shouldn't have mentioned anything. Uh, but these guys have a wreck in the back. I think that's Jason Setzer and Cole Huggins. 191. He stopped in the pit lane. We'll see what happens back here. Uh, I think we may see something with the 20. That's oh yeah, this uh, sets you right in front. I believe Coberly uh, up there as well made the uh, made the contact to initiate the uh, the caution. So yeah, Coberly in the 18. Watch him. And yeah, I think they were just trying to <laughs> occupy the same piece of real estate. Sets her slows down and pulls off. And I think that's what I actually. Did. I think he was doing that to try and stay out of the way of the leaders. Uh, and that will be the reason for this caution. It looks like he's also disconnected. So Coberly will hang on to the back end of the field in the number 18 car. Uh, back up to the front. Kerstetter in control of restart once more. And I think we're getting the one to go signal here. Nice to see some of you guys hopping into the stream. Definitely share it around. Uh, share it with your friends. Share it with your grandma. Share it with uh, your teacher. I, I don't know. Just share it with anyone who would want to watch a nice dirt race. Obviously, obviously these guys are having trouble getting going, but Robert Kerstetter off and away with the green flag. Dirt fish are trying to fish for something behind him. I'm going to keep using that. It's just too good of a line to not use. Uh, oh. Wilson Webster back there as well trying to catch up with most of these guys up in the front. You said, ooh, a second ago, and I don't think it was a good kind of thing. No, it, it was a good kind of, ooh, Fisher, uh, he really is launching out of those corners there. Yeah, Derek Fisher's trying to bring it to Kerstetter on the top side. We may have our first battle for the lead all night. And, uh, yeah, Fisher around the top side trying to get the line on Kerstetter. A little bit of contact with the wall down the front stretch. Not going to slow him down at all, though. They're going to go side by side coming into three here. Fisher looking to stay a little bit higher. Kerstetter down low. I don't think it's working for him anymore. He's going to get the pass that time. Almost cleared. He did, I think, get Derek the lead Fisher that time. Fisher led that lap. And I'll tell you what, Kerstetter is not against using the nerve bars in the right rear uh, to try and comes defend Webster. that first place position. I think Kerstetter is going to move up to the top. He does. Nelson Webster now, a teammate to Kerstetter, is going to try and pass that 27 car. We'll see how aggressive he gets. Possibly trying to throw a slider. Doesn't make it work just yet. And so Kerstetter in the second place. Derek Fisher, now your leader. Here comes Webster on the bottom. Quite that time. I think the bottom is just about gone for what you're going to be able to do with it. Is, so Kerstetter has pushed up now. Now he's got full track room there. Uh, Fisher, though, somehow as he slides a little bit wide there, he through the middle. I don't know how he does this. I cannot get this front card. I don't want to do this. But through the, through the slick, it's hooking up for him, and he is starting to walk away with it now yeah these guys are both pretty much still running in the slick webster has really gone to the top side he's trying to keep that right rear in fresh dirt but fisher and kerstetter both i think are using the slick to their advantage they may just have it set up a little bit tighter than we normally would and i think that's why they're able to do it but uh Derek fisher is starting to walk away with this thing do you think there's any catching it if you're kerstetter 
Uh, he's figured something out. What he's doing is he pushes through the middle, gets real low coming towards X. He actually didn't do it that time. He pushed up. Let's see if he does it maybe this time. And he gets a little bit of clean dirt on the bottom, what's left of it. And yeah, I think he moved away from it. It was getting him some speed, but he has just about caught back up with Fisher now. So I think he's got something figured out. Right on his tank there. Yeah, this isn't a one-man race yet. We thought it might be with Cursor. Oh, some lap traffic in the wall. Yeah, the Holy 18, cow. The 18, Coberly going for a heck of a ride. Peter Coberly in the inside of the track now. <laughs> I... That's uh, that takes talent right there. I don't know what just happened, but he was, I think he was trying to audition for the U.S. Olympics gymnast team because he was going flying through turn three and four, and we'll see what happens to Kobe here. I think he tried to pitch it in on the top side, didn't work, and he had a glitch in the wall. That's what sent him flipping through turn four. He's going to end up with the right rear planted on the inside wall. That's why he escapes, gets back to the pits. He's got no front end on that car anymore. I tell you what, Webster was really lucky there that it. The 18 landed just behind him, otherwise that may have ended his night as well. So looking through the rest of the uh, the top five here, we've got Eddie Ryan currently in fourth, Ted Liette in third. These guys I think are going to get to battling here soon uh, with Nelson Webster. I think Eddie Ryan's in a prime position to make that happen. And, uh, yeah, hopefully these guys can mix it up, maybe see some more lead changes. We've seen one so far tonight. Actually, three technically. I think Fisher went back behind the 27 for a lap and then got back ahead of him. We've had six cautions currently for 17 laps. That'll be 18 once these guys roll back around to the restart. We've completed 42 of 60. That'll be 43 of 60 in just a moment. Derek Fisher in control of this restart here, Brennan. Yeah, he's going to elect on the bottom side here. So they get it fired underway. Curse that are right behind him so far. Fell off a little bit sliding up. Fisher, pretty good lead there. Curse is going to push up almost. Yeah, he's just not quite enough to hook up and launch out of that corner real well. Webster's going to try it on the bottom here. Uh, he's able to make that work. He has caught right up to Webs or Kersetter, excuse me. Kersetter's going back to what I was mentioning before, is where he hooks up a little bit on the bottom and then he just pushes back up in the corner. We have a yellow again. I'll tell you what, that was a real interesting move there by the uh, the 38 Derek Fisher restart on the bottom side. Wasn't sure about it, but it worked out for him. He kept the lead. I think it's Jed Barton in the back who's going to be the cause of this one here. We'll see what happens to the orange 115 center of the screen. Actually, it may have happened just ahead of him. The 22 and 97 got together, and then uh, Barton, I think, was trying to roll the top side. Oh, it was well ahead. It was the, the 7 car. I'm not even sure who that is. Uh, that would be the 7 Nick Gray, who had something happen to that Trump machine, and uh, looks like he got trumped by the rest of the field just coming up behind him. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens to him here. Nick Gray, center of your screen, the number 7 car with the Trump banner on the wings. He gets into the 5 car, and I think that's Lieber. He gets into the 15, and uh, it's just utter mayhem from there. Back up to the high side here for Fisher. Looks like maybe, oh, no, we still have one to go. My fault there. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, uh, the pace car did there, but uh, all right. Pace car was definitely... Um, I don't or know. Went because, through the wall. Yeah, these guys I think are thrown yeah. off by it uh, even more than we are. So we'll see exactly <laughs> what goes on here with these guys. I think they're going to catch up and get the one to green signal here. Pace car lights should be in. off. Green flag, green flag. Oh, I was way off. Sorry, I I didn't hit the fast forward button. So okay, <laughs> it did go through the wall for a moment, but we're back to the restart. Caught them just as they were crossing the line. Derek Fisher, well back in front. Uh, of Nelson Webster, but Robert Kerstetter just won't go away. And Kerstetter's still trying to work that bottom side. Fisher's trying to fish the top again, and we've got a repeat of the battle before, just with position switched around. Come to 10 to go this time, bye. And from the right front of Kerstetter's car, you can see just how close these guys are racing and just how chaotic really it is for these guys right now trying to race it. Uh, this track is definitely... Uh, Plenty sick, slicked off. There's not really a whole lot of wet dirt left. If you, the only wet dirt you're going to find is going to be in a cushion, possibly on a fence. Uh, I don't think you're really going to find uh, too good a grip anywhere, but Kerstetter working that bottom side. He's right to the tank of the 38, and he's trying to make it work. Further back, Eddie Ryan holding off Ted Liette so far as they catch up to Webster. Yeah, for a couple laps right off uh, Webster in. Eddie Ryan there were battling for a little bit and Eddie Ryan kind of backed off so I don't um, the battle rages on up ahead though they're right on each other now 
Yeah, I have not left this uh, battle here with Kerstetter and Fisher because this is just too good. Too close to racing, and really the first time we've seen a battle like this coming down to the end of a race. I think uh, Brody needs to schedule some more linear races because this is good stuff. <laughs> Kerstetter no, trying to make the pass, doesn't make it work. Five laps to go. Uh, I think with one, one or two laps to go here, or one or two more laps in the book, so hit the, the cutoff for getting restarted. Kerstetter makes the pass that time around. Fisher drops the second, still working the top side, and here comes Nelson Webster for that second position. Yeah, they do have a slow car ahead the 41 here, and it looks like he, oh, did go a little bit low, almost cut Kerstetter off. This will be the best chance for oh, Fisher. Oh, and Kerstetter's in him. Contact, contact with the 31 as well. Derek Fisher's going to roll the top side. Kerstetter can't be happy about that. Now Fisher goes low, pulls a slider Big on the slider, lap car. Yeah. He's going to make it work, but Kerstetter gets moved way back, and now you see that 41 up in the cushion uh, trying to get out of the way of these guys. And oh, oh, he hits, he hits Webster. Around the 39 is going to have an opportunity now. They're here. just barely going to keep go. going. They spread back out, but Fisher back in the front may have just been handed this race by that 41 I car. I don't know. Kerstetter can't do anything about it. Derek Fisher going to power away and keep Kerstetter from repeating this week at Lanier. What a run. Yeah. <laughs> and Kerstetter's not going to be happy about that one. That lapped car was the 41 Logan Rumsey, who ended the race, I believe, two laps down. You see these guys stopping on the track, uh, hopping out of their cars. Kerstetter not going to be happy about that, Brennan. Yeah, I don't think so. I, good to see that he did get right back up there on Fisher, though, and really had a decent opportunity. Fisher brought it down a little bit low to prevent the slider there I think uh, but uh yeah I definitely think Kirster probably would have had a lot better chance if the 41 was not there and despite a bunch of cautions to start this race off Brendan like Bradley Wilson says in the chat one heck of a finish that was that was the best finish we've seen all season with these guys uh the, the start of the race wasn't too promising but from then on Man, this race heated up. It was great. Uh, if you can track down Fisher and, uh, or just, yeah, Fisher, I'll try and get Kerstetter and Webster in the waiting room here. Um, unfortunately, I don't it think I see Fisher It doesn't look like we've got Derek Fisher in the, the Discord, actually. So if you can contact him through the, uh, uh, the iRacing chat, that'd be great. Let him know that we can... Try and hang around and get him through the iRacing chat, or he can come in the Discord. Either way, we're going to get Nelson Webster up here for his third place interview. Nelson Webster, do you have a copy? Yes, sir. Well, Nelson, a, a heck of a run, really, to go out there uh, and hold on to third position, especially given the uh, the obstacle course there through the last couple of laps with the 41 car. Uh, you did a great job of hanging on to that position from Eddie Ryan and uh, Ted Liette, arguably one of the, a uh, couple of the really fast guys out here. Uh, so how'd you do it? Well, uh, yeah, those guys, both the two guys in front of me and the two guys behind me are all my teammates. So I'm used to running with them and know how they run and uh, know they're going to run clean. So I was just kind of cruising and holding my spot and looking for an opportunity to get by Derek or Robert, but What's never really that? happened. Yeah, it looked like your car for the mid part of that race really got hooked up. You got right into the battle with Kerstetter and uh, Fisher there. Do you think uh, you could have got by him through the mid part of the race? And what happened to your car as the laps went on? And then, I mean, you got back up at the end, but uh, it seemed like your car shifted balances mid race. Yeah, I was, uh, man, it got a little better towards the end as it feel more often. Um, I was definitely reeling them in there the last 10 laps. And uh, I was just kind of hanging back, waiting to see what was going to happen with that lap car. But I think, um, you know, I had a good chance to at least battle them for the win there. If lap car kind of screwed things up a little bit, but all in all, pretty good race. Yeah, you did really good in that number 31 machine tonight. Uh, who makes it happen for you? Who do you got to shout out tonight for that third place finish? Oh, all my teammates at TSR and um, Brody for putting this league on and, and you guys for running the broadcast. Appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you guys putting on a great show out there. That was a really good race tonight. So uh, pat yourself on the back or along with the rest of your teammates. We're getting that top five. We'll let you go there tonight. And uh, hopefully we see you next week in Knoxville. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And, uh, Brendan, whenever you're ready, I'll let you bring up Robert Kerstetter. 
Alrighty. Robert Kirstetter is burning up in the PSI booth. You got a copy of this? Yeah, I do. Well, you weren't able to quite hold it off tonight. Uh, finishing second tonight. How does that feel for you? Oh, uh, man, I tell you the truth, that was better than last week. That was just a lot of fun racing with these guys. Um, Derek did a great job, and uh, Nelson, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, we mentioned it up in your in the booth. This is the first time I think you've really, really had a lot of competition up ahead with you. Uh, it was a really good race to watch once we got some of those cautions uh, set aside. Uh, we did see here what I thought kind of interesting. Both you and Fisher were running through the middle, through the slick. Uh, you guys have the car set up intentionally like that, or...? It just felt good. Well, it, you know, I thought there was a lot of different lines to win the race. And, uh, you know, just searching when there's, you know, we've raced here so much. I've raced with those guys a ton. And we're just searching all over the place. Um, basically, yeah, you can slide up through the slick. You, you just, you got to get off the corner here. I mean, that, that's what I would say is a big thing. Yeah, that's what I was noticing. Fisher. How he had the car set up, he was managing. That's where I think he was starting to beat you. There was, he had a really good drive coming off the corners, and uh, uh, really had the car set up really well. Um, you, on the other hand, though, you kind of do your normal thing. I've started to notice you like to float around the bottom and then just push it back up. So, is that something normal for you, or is it just how you feel it out? Yeah, I mean, wherever it's fastest, I mean, I, I'll run the top, and then you know, if it's if it's not good, I know the bottom, and I can I can definitely run the bottom there. And if you were watching at the end, that was really like on the on the apron there, which that's when I started catching them again. So, yeah, just a lot of searching around on that track. Yeah, well, as the wives are starting to line down there, we did have a little bit of an end with the forty-one car, Logan Rumsey. He kind of impeded your chance there. If I think maybe coming away with the win, uh. Upset about that at all, or any any thoughts on that? No, I'm not upset with that. I mean, you know, I know, um, you know, what's he? You know, I don't know what he's gonna do. I mean, you know, uh, Derek is up top. I'm down to bottom. Where's he supposed to go? It's it's just part of racing. It's fine. It's you know, I I could have went up there and I didn't. I thought maybe he would slide up, but he didn't. You know, Derek made the right move and he won the race. So, you know, congratulate to to him. Alrighty, well, congratulations, congra excuse me, congratulations again on the second place. Uh, give you an opportunity here. You want to shout out any sponsors? Anybody that helps you out, put on the show for you? Yep, of course, uh, TSR, uh, Tony Stewart Racing, and uh, all the guys that helped me get this thing going. So, and you guys, of course, for putting the broadcast on. Thank you, guys. Alrighty, well, we'll go ahead and move you back down and let you celebrate your second place finish tonight. All right, thanks. And as we uh, drag Derek Fisher in, that was uh, Robert Kirsten, our second place finisher tonight. But Derek Fisher, this is Andrew Cardinal in the PSI TV booth. Do you have a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, Derek won a heck of a run out of you tonight. You uh, you bested Kirsten. Uh, granted, you had a little bit of a pick there at the end to uh, go out there and beat that 27 car. You certainly did a great job. Uh, you led almost half of the race, 27 of 60, and Kerstetter was the only guy uh, otherwise to lead. Uh, just how would you get by Kerstetter in the first place to set up for that chance to uh, get back by him, given that you had a pick at the end? I just got lucky on a restart and got to his, got to his outside. Robert's just a really good racer, and we had a real good clean race, and I got lucky with the lap car at the end, uh, but everybody come out, top five finish for TSR. And I want to thank you guys for broadcasting and Brody for putting this race on. Sounds good, man. Well, uh, real quick before I let you go, I uh, mentioned you were fishing around a lot, and I'd like to use that now that I made the connection between fishing and your last name, Fisher. I don't know why. It's just a really good line in my mind. So uh, you really were fishing around a lot. It just just straight up you were uh, you, you and Kerstetter both were looking around the track a lot uh what did you figure out at the end that got you to uh to be able to I guess just be faster than Kerstetter what did you find there at the end to uh to try and beat him there yeah I just I just got to be able to keep my momentum up right through the middle and, and just got to get to his outside and kind of keep him down low and that, that hurts him more than anything but yeah, we just race hard. We always race really hard together. All the top five, you know, TSR guys, we race really hard together, but clean. And 
you know, uh, it was just a good, clean, fun race for sure. Uh, thanks, guys, for putting it on. Sounds good. Well, we'll let you go. We'll let you celebrate this win. You have one at Lanier. Hopefully, we see you next week at uh, at Knoxville. It was a great run from that number thirty-eight tonight. Uh, yeah, hopefully, we we'll see you next week in Knoxville. Oh, for sure. And thank you, guys. And that was your race winner tonight from Lanier National Speedway, Derek Fisher. Seemed like he was kind of uh, in an awkward situation there, so I let him go. I really, he, uh, yeah, he's your race winner. Great job there. I, I don't really know what else to say. Just, I mean, he bested Cursetter, and that's not an easy thing to do here. Uh, granted, the whole top five was teammates, so that, that helps out quite a bit. But we'll check out your race results tonight, and Brennan will let you fire off at the top ten. All righty. So, obviously, our winner, uh, Derek Fisher tonight, and second place going to Robert Kerstetter, uh third going to Nelson Webster. Then Eddie Ryan in fourth, and Ted Liet in fifth. Uh, good finishes for both of them. Uh, sixth was going to Dale Glessner. He started from tenth. And a really good big mover here, Tony uh, Sousa or Sousa. I'm sorry if I butchered that one. Seventeenth to seventh, that's a good finish for him. Uh, Brad Spidel finished eighth. Ninth going to Brandon Franks. He started nineteenth. Another good run for him. Now uh, tenth going to Aaron Hamill. And in 11th position, we had Jarrett Liebert barely hang on uh, to a position just outside the top 10. Brock Garris going to come home in the 12th spot. Austin Nye will come home in 13th in the number 97 with Lachlan Robertson close behind in the 48. He was the last car on the lead lap at the end of the night. Logan Rumsey, we saw him uh, play rather vital from 15th position, one lap down there at the end. He'll come home in 15th. DJ Kilinowski in 16th. Brandon Steele, 17th, Nick Gray, 18th, Jed Barton, 19th, and Peter Coberly comes home in that beat-up, battered, and uh, aired-out number 18 car. Yeah. Uh, 21st tonight was Cole Huggins, followed by Jason Sester in uh, 22nd. 23rd went to Chris Horn tonight, with 24th going to Craig Levon. 25th to Landon Austin, and rounding it out tonight in 26th was Braden Jones. Moving on through the field, we've just got guys that didn't make the show, so the rest of these guys uh, came out, brought their greatest effort, brought their greatest uh, sprint card they had in the shop, unfortunately did not make the race. It's going to be Michael Shell in the number two car, Chase Howard in the 44, Glenn Richards in the 82, Cameron Jones in the 16, Jerry Glenn, uh, Jarrett Reichard, Blaze Baker, Steve Hahn, Zach Evanson, and William Teron rounding out the field of guys who tried to make the show, unfortunately could not. And that will be it here tonight from Lanier National. Uh, Brendan, real quick before we go, uh, what was the highlight of that race? And what's your highlight moving forward to uh, Knoxville? Um, definitely have to say the highlight of that race was probably those last 10 laps there. That was quite a battle that went on. He saw nose to tank there for the first and second place. And I don't think he can really ask for very much more. Maybe some more guys up there. You imagine having five or six cars all battling and out like that. That would be really awesome. Uh, Going forward to Knoxville, uh, I'd say see some more of that. Uh, if a little bit wider track and a little bit more room to play around with everybody, so I think we'll see some some fewer cautions and a better chance for some green flag racing there. So uh, hopefully we can see another battle play out like that, like we saw tonight. Yeah, I was really, really impressed by those guys uh, up in the front being able to put on a battle, and I, I, I'm really glad we got to see that battle finally. I think that was the first time all season that we really got to see uh, such a – such a great battle like that. I just, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, it was, it was awesome to see it. I was very, very uh, impressed by those guys up in the front. Obviously those five up in the front were all uh, Tony Stewart racing teammates, uh, Derek Fisher through Ted Liette. Uh But I mean, it was still a great racing. They have nothing to be ashamed about by any means. And uh, yeah, just a, a heck of a job there. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. All right, well, I think that's about a wrap. And, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone, for coming out. Thanks for tuning in to PSI TV tonight. This has been the race number five coverage from Linear National Speedway of the Dirt Racing Challenge Series. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week at Knoxville Speedway for race number six and the finale on the season. <laughs>